Hello everyone, I am here with my favorite topic of all time, cookies. So today I didn't want to try just a good cookie recipe. No, no, that is not good enough. I want the best cookie recipe, the one that is most viewed, most viral, the one that has gotten the most reviews or re just views in general. Like I went everywhere, I went on Pinterest, I went on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, um, I went on like Food Network and allrecipes.com and just trying to find a recipe that is really popular and one that people really love. But not only are we gonna find it, but we're gonna bake it, we're gonna judge it, we're gonna see if this is actually the best cookie recipe in the entire world and if it needs to replace my current cookie recipe. I mean, you know it's gotta be good if I'm gonna replace that. So sit back, grab yourself a snack, preferably cookies, because then we can all enjoy cookies together. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on new videos every Saturday and click on that notification bell so you don't miss when they go live. And without further ado, let's get into this. And first I'm gonna start by telling you what the recipe is because I don't actually think I told you. So this recipe that I found has probably the most views, the most reviews, and is the most well-liked from everything that I found. It is off of Tasty. It is one that I have not tried yet. If you guys saw, I did a Rachel versus Tasty cookie taste test, but it wasn't this recipe. This one has 35 million views. Just let that sink in there for a second. That's a lot of people watching, or maybe m multiple people watching over and over again, because that's what I would do. But it is their ultimate brown butter chocolate chip cookie recipe. It is very complex. There are a lot of elements in here. We have espresso powder, we have melted butter, that well, brown butter based on the title. Just a lot of stuff going on here. It is fairly involved. Oven just went off, thank you. But I'm excited, I have the recipe up here in front of me. We're just gonna walk through all of the steps and make ourselves some cookies. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are actually going to sift the flour, something that I don't normally do with my cookies and I probably should. And they use two different types of flours. They use bread flour as well as all-purpose. So we are going to combine those into the little sifter here. One of each, already pre-made in the bowls. I'm so fancy. So we have a cup of the bread flour and three quarter cups of all-purpose, plus two teaspoons of kosher salt and one teaspoon of baking soda. We're gonna plop that all together and just sift it through until it's nice and combined. And then putting in the kosher salt at the end because that is not gonna go through the sifter. Now we're gonna go and make the brown butter. So this is basically melting down butter until it turns this like nice nutty brown shade and then using that instead of what I would normally do which is just creamed butter. So room temperature butter that's just nice and um, malleable, but it's not melted down. So let's go over here and go and do that. So the butter is going into the pan. This is the largest pan that I have, and I'm just gonna melt it at medium heat. Get nice and melted, but it hasn't started to brown yet. Keep you posted, I gotta keep stirring this thing. Basically you want the water to evaporate out of the, the butter, and so that all the milk solids will start to brown, and it creates like a really nice flavor. We're going to add the water back in, in a little bit, but the most important thing that they said is to just keep stirring. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. You can see it is starting to brown in here, so I'm just, I'm constantly stirring. I actually turned down the heat just a little bit um, as well, just so it doesn't, <laughs> these little pieces don't burn. Um, but keeping an eye on it. So now that it's more brown, I'm going to put it into this little glass container here just to cool, and I'm gonna put it in the fridge for no more than 15 minutes. It needs to be cool, but it can't be solid. So I'm gonna work on the other ingredients while that does that. Oh, actually, before I do that, I need to add back in two to three tablespoons of water just to bring it back to one cup. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute, and then we're gonna do that. So now while the butter is cooling, let's go on to the rest of the ingredients here mostly like sugars and eggs, I think. So I'm going to add into my big mixing bowl here one cup of dark brown sugar as well as half a cup of white sugar, which sounds pretty similar to like what I would normally do in my cookies, just in case anyone is curious. Then I'm gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I'm using the the real stuff. And then one teaspoon of espresso powder. Now espresso powder is an interesting one. I haven't um, added espresso powder to my cookies before, but I'd have two cakes and it works really well. Or sometimes it'll be like instant coffee. <laughs> I can see espresso powder everywhere. I'm gonna get so caffeinated. But it has like a really nice smell. 
I feel like that's gonna play nicely in the cookie, so I'm excited. Now the brown butter has been cooling for about 15 minutes or so. It's still liquidy, it's not solid. I'm going to pour it into this and we're going to mix it. I have a stand mixer, don't have a hand mixer. So that's what we're gonna do. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell it. It smells amazing. I'm gonna add an egg as well as an egg yolk into here and then cream until it is incorporated. And then we're gonna move on to adding in the dry ingredients. So I'm gonna add about a third of this flour at a time and mix it really, really gently. Also spill it all over the place. Just wanna stir to combine. You do not wanna overmix this step. Okay, now we get to incorporate the chocolate. So there are two different types of chocolate because one is not enough, which I agree with. I mean, there should always be more than one. Like, tip, like I would do three, but like, just gonna follow the recipe. So they use half a cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips as well as I think it's five ounces, yeah, five ounces of dark chocolate chopped up. And they specify to use a wooden spoon when mixing it. And I don't know if it's just they have something against the silicone ones, but I can't use this apparently. And we're just going to fold in all of the chocolate and get it nice and incorporated, but not too incorporated because you don't want to over mix. Oh, I cannot, I cannot sit for this. I need to stand. All right, now we have our batter and it smells amazing. It looks amazing. It has a really nice consistency to it. As someone who makes cookies a lot, I should know. And they say for optimal flavor to refrigerate it overnight or at least an hour, which I agree with. It makes such a difference in how good your cookies are. It just like helps the, the flavors to meld together better. I don't know, but it's really, really good. So I'm gonna do that even though I just wanna just eat this bowl of the cookie dough right now, but I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna do this the proper way, so we'll be back when this has been refrigerated overnight. Here you guys go, here's a close up of the batter. Like, look how good that looks. Mm. No, Rachel, no, you could wait, you could do it. Okay, so it is now day two, it is actually technically the end of day two, so there's lots of time to marinate. And uh, now I'm gonna go and put the cookies in the oven, but I wanna show you guys what they look like. So we have the batter right there, and I have a giant scoop right here because they want each of the cookies to have three tablespoons worth of dough in them and space three inches apart. It's, just, it's very specific. I have my oven set for 345 just because my oven tends to be a little bit on the hotter side than normal. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna bake them up for 12 minutes and we'll see what they look like. All right, it has been 14 minutes. Look how phenomenal these look. Oh, I am so excited to eat these. Okay, so now let's taste test these. Okay. Mm. I don't know what to make of these. Are these any good or am I just biased for my own cookies? I thought you were the cookie connoisseur. You should know this. Oh, that's weird, right? I think if someone knew in advance that this is what it was going to taste like, they wouldn't make it. But if someone just threw this in front of me, they'd be like, I guess. I don't know. That's surprisingly bland. You know? But also kind of like, <laughs> yeah, like toffee -y. It's the, yeah, it's got like a toffee taste yeah. to it. It doesn't taste like a chocolate chip cookie. No. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Those are not the best cookies in the world. I'm just saying. It's toffee. It's like a toffee taste to it. It's like butter toffee. Yeah, no. 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 Like, no. Mm -mm. like not terrible, but like not what I was expecting. Especially Since it's not a chocolate chip cookie. No, that's what I'm saying. If you knew it was gonna taste like that, you wouldn't go through the effort. Mm-mm. No, didn't like that. What do you guys think? Have you tried this recipe before? Do you like it? Do you have a preferred chocolate chip cookie recipe or a cookie ch recipe in general that I should try? Leave it for me down in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Check out the other videos on the side if you have missed any. And that's everything. I hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome Saturday and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Love you all. Mwah.